wellnesscouch.com, streaming wellness into your lives. You're listening to A Quirky Journey, the healthy family podcast with your hosts, Joe Witten and Leah Follett. Welcome to A Quirky Journey. Join us as we share our family's journeys to good health. You'll find plenty of inspiration, tips and recipe ideas, as well as stories from everyday people who've struggled and overcome health problems and diet challenges in their own families. I'm Jo Witten, author of the blog and book Quirky Cooking, and I'm here with my friend and co-host, Leah Follett. Hi, Leah. And um, we're going to talk about broths today. We are. We get so many questions about broth, and it's such a confusing thing, and yet it's so simple. It's very simple. Yeah, it is for me. There, there seems to be new questions every day on my chat group about broths and why isn't my broth gelling and my broth smells bad or my broth doesn't taste like anything or how do I know how long to keep it in the fridge or how long should it cook? So we're going to try and cover all of those questions today and if we miss one, well, you'll just have to ask us on our Facebook page. Yeah, ask us again. We don't mind being tested. <laughs> so right. um, mm. we're going to share, first of all, what we do in our kitchens Mm-hmm. and um, then go through some questions that I've gotten on my page and probably Leah's got some on hers as well. I don't get as many as yours. Well, you probably still have some. Mine are, mine are just sort of random and I think you're a lot kinder with your responses and actually because <laughs> you've got such a good group and community and there's so many people in there, like there's so much knowledge in your community yeah, they that people just other. they answer each other yeah. whereas mine kind of sit there and I'm kind of like, oh, I wish someone would jump in and answer that because I know they all know the answer but I'm just like, oh. Yeah, yeah, it's come been on, there guys. too long. I'll have to do that. And then once I put something, then it gets everything everyone else going. But yeah. You guys, you just, just jump in there and it's like heal the world. Oh, it's good. I love it. It's good because I can there's no way I can answer them all myself. So I need everyone to do that. Yeah, we were just talking about Joe. We were. Um, we were. We were just talking about Joe and I just I just think of her as, as Jojo, you know. And she's just a homeschool mom and she's just like me. But <laughs> You know, like you see these pictures and she's at, you know, doing these cooking classes and for about 17 people and I'm thinking, yeah, I'd like to go to one of those. But I just heard that her cooking classes are like to 200 people. <laughs> Holy, you know, like how do you get draw a crowd? And, and so now it's like Wonder Woman. I only see the one side. I see the, the, the dowdy sort of. Oi. Uh, <laughs> no, but you know what I mean? Hiding behind the glasses and incognito and undercover and then. Da, 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 Thermomix roll out this big shiny thing. <laughs> the Joe with, Show. The Joe Show with blades on it. And it's like all of a sudden you're a superhero. So, oh, man, that's just a, crazy. I need a Thermomix cape. <laughs> you do. Oh, how cool would that do? You could be like white and grey and green. I'm only kidding, okay? <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm going there and this no, needs to not. happen. Oh, no, no, who do no, I no. contact in? Oh, oh dear. We can have groupies. I've started something. We can, we can have Cake Crusader groupies. We could have, oh, oh, oh my head's just gone. Yeah, it's exploded. Well, Leah, Leah, you're coming to one of my classes in about two weeks. So I'm starting the trend. You, I'll be you, there in my green cape. Okay, you can be there in your green cape. That'll be lovely. <laughs> no, just pretend I don't know you. No, just kidding. What? <laughs> I'm only kidding. It's all right. I'll hang out with Fuad in the back. It's cool. Okay, you do that. <laughs> Because no one's going to let me anywhere near the machine wearing a cape acting like a four-year-old Aww. in a superhero costume. It's brilliant. <laughs> I'm so excited. I'm doing superhero poses at the moment. I'm doing like that Superman, you know, how he's got his yes. arm out in front and his other one tucked up under his wing. Yeah. You're crazy. I know. If I had more agility, I'd dive up onto my bench and lay down like I was flying. But anyway, back to, <laughs> back to bone broth. Let's do it. We need video. Okay. We need video on these Skype calls. Oh, we You're do. Wacky. We, we need, I know. I can't help it. But then I'd have to brush my hair. I put a video up like, just yesterday and I just put like a, a bit of a headband on. I saw and, that. And call, it was good. Call it a day. <laughs> It yeah. was good. Oh, if we did video, I'd have to look presentable. I know. That's why I don't do much video. Well, I put it up because I do everything quickly. I'm just like, oh, I'll make a video. Oh, I'll put it up. And then I go, I wasn't dressed. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of what we did with the bone broth one, wasn't it? Oh, we did. That was, that was, we were just doing our regular ordinary thing yeah. while I was up there staying with you. And we just, <laughs> spare of the moment, quick, yeah. I hold the phone. Yeah, no makeup, no hair done. 
bit no, rough. <laughs> no, and I've been growing out my pixie cut as well because I've decided I want my ponytail back. So I looked atrocious, but that's okay because he Isaac took not. that in consideration. I did. Yeah, he kept chopping our heads off. <laughs> he chopped our heads off and it was just like from, you know, the tip of my nose to my belly button and which was great because he was focusing on the food. See, was, it was all was. about the food. He was doing a great job, but I feel sorry. You should invest. I feel sorry for him because... He needs a tripod, or yeah. you need a tripod. I, you know, I have this? I have told him to go look on eBay for me, so he's gonna he's gonna work on that. Yeah, because he'd be <laughs> he's gonna end up with you know those huge Hulk arms if he's got to stand there and hold the the camera every time you want to make a video. <laughs> well, well then, never mind. Never mind. Okay, so back on to broth. Right, back on to broth. <laughs> so um, we obviously with gaps use broths a lot. Every day we have broths cooking in our kitchens and um, it's very healing for the gut. And one of the major things about GAPS and a lot of these other healing diets is the broths, like you can't really do it without it. You need it. So we are going to talk about how important it is and why. And um, Leah will give you some, hopefully some scientific well, reasons. <laughs> no, oh, I mean, no, I'm, I'm, I'm just a health coach. I'm not scientific. Okay. I'm just practical. Cool. And that's, okay. that's my role and that's my bubble and my sphere. If, if I, I had, do have if some. I was expected to get scientific, I'd have to go and get like a Bachelor of Nutrition or something. Okay. Okay. So I will give you what I, what I actually know and what I feel comfortable in saying. Yeah. Um, but whilst you've brought that up as, you know, why it works, mm-hmm. I'm going to tell my story first. You can okay. go second. Okay, sure. Is that okay? It's fine. Okay. So we started our our journey because of autism and autoimmune diseases. So I had endometriosis and I had surgery for that. And, and, you know, we tried the elimination diet and fail safe and we went casein free and gluten free and, you know, not in that order, but that's what we did. And I'm just, I need to point out that all of those diets are great because they keep moving you towards a point. But at the same time, the elimination diet, it's about cutting things out. The fail safe diet is cutting more things out and so is casein and gluten free, but they don't, talk about the importance of bringing more nourishing healing foods in and it wasn't until we actually Mm. found the GAPS diet that it was like okay we're going to slightly shift and you know parallel and instead of concentrating on these vegetables we're just going to change them for these ones which were slightly less starchy but we're going to start bringing in all these nourishing foods and the, the whole point of all these other diets like I don't know I haven't had a client that's done FODMAPs but it's all about the restriction and letting the the Mm. gut heal but they need to have a greater emphasis on um, having bone broths as part of their protocol. Like you've got AIP and, and all these other ones that bring in those nurturing foods and get rid of seeds and get rid of the inflammation, all those other things. And I just don't see the point of doing mm. an elimination diet and not do any of the healing. So while yeah, you're doing the elimination diet, you should be doing the bone broth at the same time because we all know that the reason why you're on a diet is because your system isn't coping. Yeah. So, you know, like that's the most important thing that I really wanted to, to point out is that all these, these diets, yeah, you, you've realised that there's a problem and there's an imbalance and we've got to restore that, but you need to have that nourishment and you need to have it in the form of bone broth because mm. it is essentially, you know, vitamins, minerals, amino acids, all the antioxidants, it's your um, collagen, it's the, um, oh, you, know, the, you know, the gelatin, Glucosine. all those things. Yeah, glucosamine, um, all those things which help with the inflammation, help repair the gut. It's the easiest way to absorb your vitamins, minerals and nutrients with the least amount of work that the body actually has to do. Yeah. And that's the most important thing. And and I think that if, you know, if anyone's doing an elimination diet, there is no reason why you can't sneak in bone broth at that level and that yeah. place and time. So, you know, everyone that's doing the, their, their diet to work out where they are, you all need to go through those processes. But just because it's not in the book doesn't mean you shouldn't be doing it. Mm. That's that's it. Rant over. Your turn. That was it. That was it. Oh, that, that was it. That, that was, was pretty my short. Own, yeah, I know for me. I yeah, was really. Well done. I, and that was kind of concise, right? <laughs> it was very concise. I know. Okay, mine can be your longer. Turn. No. <laughs> okay, well, yours can be longer. I'm not being a hog today. Oh. Well, um, in my family, we grew up having stocks broths you know that was just something that mum did basically to to save money and not waste ingredients so when you finished a roast especially roast chickens you know that's pretty common I think with a lot of um, cultures is you put the bones and any scraps left over and any gravy you put into a pot cover it with water and let it simmer until it's all made a lovely broth and um, use that in your cooking or use it as a basis for soup 
um, and that's generally what we did in our family. The, the carcass and the little scraps and bits and pieces left over from a roast dinner were another meal when you made it into a soup. Um, so that's I grew up doing that. Um, there's a bit of a confusion sometimes with people saying what's the difference between broth and stock because when we were growing up we always just called it stock. Well, really, the terms get interchanged all the time. And I is have, that is that because you're from the US though? I don't know. I mean, that could be. <laughs> Cultural translations? Yeah, I don't know. But a lot of people have said to me that it's the same thing, it's just stock and it's mm. just a trendy new name for stock. But I don't know. Anyway, yeah. when we were growing up, we called it stock, I suppose. And um, if we tried to explain all the fancy differences between consumé and all those lardy yeah. things, we'd get laughed at by our foodie friends because we would, we would, we would get it wrong <laughs> and then we'd get emails and ha, 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 I can't believe you didn't know that. So I'm going to pretend like I do know <laughs> vaguely and not embarrass myself any further. <laughs> Well, basically, um, if you go on to like Wikipedia or something like that, it says that a stock is the one that we make with the bones, but okay. a broth has meat in it. And I always okay. thought it was the other way around. So whatever, call it whatever you like, really, just do it. <laughs> yeah, just, just do it. It just doesn't do matter. It. Yeah. As so, long as you've got the cartilage and the bony bit, yeah. as long as you've got the jointed bit in there, it doesn't matter. You can call it whatever you want, but you want that. You Ooh. want that goodness. Yeah. Yeah. So um, we had obviously done that for years off and on and more for flavour than anything. Like we didn't really know. I mean, you always hear the stories of chicken soup and chicken broth being so good for you and very healing and that's what grandmothers always made when it was, you know, someone was sick and we always did that, you know, the chicken soup when do you Do you sick. still do that? Oh, like, definitely. Yeah, so my, when someone's sick in yeah. the community, you still do that? Oh, yeah. When, when my... Um, kids get sick I always put on well if I don't already have it chicken broth and then make the out of the really good gelatinous broth I make a lemon chicken coconut soup with all fresh coriander and ginger and garlic and um, chili and it's just that's on my website we can put a link to it but it's yeah it's in my that. book as well it's very very tasty and you can just about feel it working it's especially if you've got a cold or something and just feel yuck it just is amazing and I put the the fresh herbs and ginger and garlic and chili and everything in right at the end just stir it in and don't mm -hmm. cook it mm -hmm. so you get that you know really strong flavor as well as the goodness it's not all cooked out oh I'm gonna put that on my winter rotation yeah mm. so um we well we what, what did you ask me something about oh giving broth away when people are sick <laughs> yes I do that I, Oh dear! I know I'm, I'm doing a Leah. Distracted at butterflies and helicopters and you know small shiny things yes. and oh how exciting new thought thing <laughs> and you've done it today. Ha! <laughs> hey, I do it all the time. <laughs> like, You're just better at disguising it. Yeah, I must be. Yeah, I must be. Okay, so um, you still do um, yeah, make it up as a, a, a gift? Yes, when people are sick, I make them broth, and. Especially, obviously, for family, but even friends who are really sick. Because when I find when you're really sick, the last thing you feel like doing is cooking and making things. And so, at the time you really, really need it is the time you don't have it. And like I can, yeah. I can keep up with broths and everything all the time, and then I get sick, and then that's it. I can't. Yeah. So I do get my kids to do it now, so that's fine. But if you don't have big kids, <laughs> no. You know, you have to sort of have a bit of a network with your friends and say, look, if I get sick or else make sure you freeze it. But we, yeah. we go through it so much, we hardly ever have any in the freezer. Yeah. And when you are sick, you, you don't think of it either. Like no. Jersey, Jersey rings me and she's like, this has happened. And I'm like, all right, well, step one, have you had bicarb? You know, like the yeah. other day, yeah, anyway, I won't go into what she did the other day, but I'm like, hey, step one, calm down. Have you had bicarb? Yeah. Oh, no, I haven't done that. She's got to go back and do that. Or if she's cut herself, but we don't think of that. And no. it's the same when you're sick. You don't. When you're you sick, just you just go into this coma and are just hibernate. happy. Yeah, you just wallow around in your sickness, Misery. making other people <laughs> sad and grumbling and, and being the cranky mama. Yes. Um, you don't you don't actually think of that. It's it's just so amazing that other people think of you. They can see that you're struggling and they come to your aid. And yes. oh, yeah, you need I that. love it. I know. It's part of being a good friend, isn't it? 
<laughs> well, for the longest time, you know those St. Bernard dogs that yeah. you see typically with the, you know, I know now it's a rum canister, but for the longest time I was, I thought it was soup. Oh, I that's what it, it should because, be, chicken soup. Well, uh, you know. That makes more Di- sense. Well, I had a video that I used to watch when I was little and it was Disney and it was Donald Duck and they were, go- and Goofy and they were going up this, you know, slope yeah. or whatever and Goofy, you know, fell off and. And then this St. Bernard came in with the canister and then he was all warmed up. So I just assumed it was soup. I, it wasn't until I we got that out again and went and saw it and went, oh, no, no, that's in fact some sort of alcohol. Oh. Like it completely missed me. It completely missed me. A more kid-friendly version would be chicken soup. <laughs> so, yeah, okay, the St. Bernard, Bernard is always going to be carrying chicken soup for me. I agree. That's okay. perfect. So, yes, with the um, GAPS journey, once we started that, we already were doing broths quite regularly, Mm -hmm. but but obviously we had to ramp it up a bit because you're really supposed to be having a cup of broth three times a day with GAPS. Mm -hmm. And they say that one of the main reasons that people fail with GAPS is not having enough broth, that that and probiotics. Yeah, and a cup seems like an awful lot, but mm, if you're... um, If you're adding it to meals, it's not. No, and you go through it quite quickly. And if you're sipping it throughout the day, I mm. put mine in a thermos. I know you've always got the perpetual broth thing going. Yeah. But for me, I heat mine up, I cook my breakfast, and then I don't necessarily come back to the stove during the day. Yeah. But I've always got it in a bit of a thermos. Oh, that's a good idea. Mm. Well, yeah. I thought so. And sometimes I'll take it in it like one of those, um, what do you call it, the thermos cups, the coffee cups. If I'm going yes. somewhere, take it with me. When I was away in Melbourne... Yeah. Um, I had some well, – I'm probably getting ahead of myself here, am I? No, that's all right. Doesn't we'll matter. jump all over the place. Doesn't okay. matter. That's good. Mm-hmm. Um, when I was in Melbourne and I had just started Gaps, I had the good fortune to be just around the corner from the little restaurant brothel, B-R-O-T-H-L, <laughs> and they have the most amazing broth simmering there all the time and you can choose what you want added to your broth and you can have a side of kimchi or sauerkraut and you can have your – you know, all, oh you man, know, you can, I'm going there next time. It's awesome, and you can get your um, chicken feet chucked in if you want them. You can. <laughs> it means I don't have to pack the slow cooker when I go on holiday. That's right. <laughs> so I went there a couple of times, and I got takeaways from there a few times. And so you've got the big glass jars, and they put it in the brown paper bag, and you take your bottle of broth off in your brown paper bag. <laughs> well, I've That's actually seen funny. that, like Bondi, Bond, oh, blah, not Bundy. Bondi yeah. is a bit of a trendsetter thing and you yes. see a lot of people now, in, you know, people are always walking around with coffee cups but yep. now they're walking around with bone broth. So it's oh, actually yay. got a bit of a, have a they got fashion s- thing going on yeah. about it at the moment. Have they got hipster. somewhere there that they sell it? Yeah, I have no idea. I only go down, I go for a swim, I do a fitness thing but I can see, you know, like they've got like a, a little cup and it's definitely not coffee and it's not cappuccino and you can smell it when it walks, when they go ah, past. All right, everyone so, who lives in Bondi, if you can tell us where they're getting that, that would be great. If yeah. you share the information. <laughs> yeah, so I've seen that and also Brett Hill yeah. had, um, I saw the other day that he had a takeaway something, um, a takeaway um, bone broth from oh. somewhere. So we'll have to find out where he's getting it from as well. I'm just Googling it. <laughs> you're just Googling. Okay, well, you can Google that. That's fine. Um, so while you're Googling that, yeah, the history of bone broth, you know, like we've always used it. It's a cheap meal um, for, I suppose, early humans. They yeah. would just use the bones. And like you said, with your mum, you'd use the, the leftovers. And mm-hmm. if they were a hunter-gatherer society, at the end of a meal the night before or end of a hunt or, or when things were getting low, that would probably be what they would start their day off with would be some sort of bone broth. Yeah. I would think because, you know, like they'd have to get up and get going again. Yeah. So, I, you know, I love the fact that they used to have that for breakfast and, and even a lot of the stylized drawings all go back to being, you know, broth-based or there's always a pot or, you know. Yeah. And I think that's just great, you know, that we can go back to that yeah. and, and take that from history and that we've actually carried it through. Like I, could you imagine, I don't know, like the Civil War? Mm. You know, like what were they doing? Were they recycling and how did they keep their immune systems up? I'm you know, and keep because of all their stress loads and all those other things. So I think it's something that we sort of had and then we lost and we didn't value and now we're getting it again. It was natural medicine and like in Jewish culture, everyone knows that chicken soup is medicine. It's it's Jewish penicillin. (laughs) I know, and they use like the feet and the beaks and all the other bits and pieces as well. And, you know, it's really hard to get those. Yeah, um, but... Yeah, there is ways to get it, definitely. 
there is, but it, well, for yeah, me, but most it's people, hard to get. Most they don't people value don't them. know where to get it, yeah. Mm. Mm. Yeah. But even if you use a whole chicken or even if you just use the wings, you've got so much cartilage and everything in there that you can do a really good chicken broth. Mm. Um, I heard you the other day. You said that um, when you do chicken broth, you put the whole chicken in? Yeah, well, I quite often do that. Well, I generally nearly always do that. Now and then I'll do the chicken wing one. But mm-hmm. I find that a little bit frustrating because then you've got to try and because I can't bear to waste anything. So I sit there picking all the meat off the wings and it takes forever. So Mm -hmm. um, what I find the best way and the easiest, simplest, no waste way Mm -hmm. is I just buy a whole organic chicken and I just stick it in the slow cooker frozen. I don't even bother thawing it out. I just cover it in water. Joe, you're genius. (laughs) Someone will probably tell you. That never occurred to me. Straight from the freezer, straight into the... (gasps) I always do that and stick it on high. Um, I chuck in all the, you know, the uh, bits of leek, your ends of leeks, ends of carrots, celery ends, all your leafy bits of the celery. All the dodgy bits that no yeah. one wants to eat. Yep. Um, garlic, lots of, plenty of garlic, you know, two or three cloves of garlic, big ones. Mm. Um, onion, uh, a handful of parsley and um, cover it in water and add your slosh of apple cider vinegar. Mm-hmm. A slosh is, is That's about, a technical measurement. Yeah, it is very technical. So measure your slosh. Yes. <laughs> Be pedantic when you that's slosh. That's right. That's right. And then I just put the lid on and leave it. And if I do it, sometimes I do it on a pot in, on the stove and I just simmer it on low. And sometimes I do it in the slow cooker. If you're doing it overnight, do it in the slow cooker because um, you, if you do it on low in the slow cooker, in the morning the chicken's falling off the bone and you can take it out. If, mm-hmm. you, if you're doing it in a pot on the stove, it'll only take about three hours and then you really need to take that meat out mm. because if you don't, it gets really tough. And the longer you leave it, it starts to get like a burnt taste, the, the broth and the meat. Oh. Um, but if you leave it too long, it'll get like a not a nice texture on the meat as well. So okay. as soon as it's falling off the bone, I take the whole chicken out and put it on a like a platter and just separate all the meat off it and put it into a dish in the fridge. Mm -hmm. And then all the bones and the bits of skin and any um, like liver or neck or ends of wings and things like that, cartilage, I just chuck that all back in. Mm -hmm. Um, Make sure that it's still covered in water and everything. Mm -hmm. If you need to add more water, you can. If it's not, if it's on the stovetop, sometimes you might need to. Um, I use it on the stovetop. I use my Le Creuset pot and it's, I probably don't say that right again, but anyway. um, It sounds pretty posh. No. (laughs) I'll have to ask my friend Alex how to say it because she did tell me from her French um, upbringing, but I can't remember. Anyway, um, so that's really heavy cast iron and the lid fits on really well and I can leave that on all night on my stove and not really get much liquid loss at all. But if Mm. you're using a thinner, like a stainless steel stock pot, that will lose quite a bit of water, so I wouldn't really use one of them overnight. Yeah, but you've got a special gas stove as well. I have a special gas stove that if the gas... If the fire goes out, the gas turns off automatically. But otherwise, use a slow cooker. Yes. Well, I kind of do mine a bit different. Okay. Um, So because I've got hungry boys and they can't wait, including Mark, Mm -hmm. I will do uh, two whole chickens and I roast them off in the oven. Yep. And then all the drippings from the chicken goes into the slow cooker pot and then I strip the chickens. So I've got one for our meal Mm -hmm. and then I've got another that's, you know, going to be either breakfast or lunch or going to something else. Yeah. And that... All that meat gets either stripped off for dinner that night and the other half of it goes in the fridge for later on. Mm-hmm. Um, now, it may sound disgusting, but I actually wait for the children to stop gnawing on their bones and I actually use those bones as well Yeah, because they leave so much chicken on there. They're not, they do. They're not as, um, I don't know, dexterous and they don't get in and, and finish all those things off. Yeah. And I kind of figure that it's cooking in the slow cooker overnight. So I just... So yeah. I've just got the bones in and all the chicken's been put in the fridge. So, And then that goes in the slow cooker for me overnight. It's covered in right. water. It's on low with all my veggies and bits and pieces. Yeah. But that's how I do mine. And the reason why I don't think that putting the whole chicken into the slow cooker would work for me is because I would forget that I've <laughs> got to take the chook out and yeah. I would have a, a, a burnt flunny flavouring stock every time. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, overnight it's fine in the slow mm. cooker and the next morning I take it out yeah. if it's on low. If it's on low, okay, but if it's so that's the secret is have it on low. Yeah, if I start it during the day, 
Um, I'll generally do it on the stove top at first at least and um, just if I want that meat quickly then you've mm. only, it only takes three hours and the meat's all cooked and yeah. you can take it out and then then worry about your broth. So you could then put your broth and bones into the slow cooker if you wanted to. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, it's sort of um, – when I have a leftover roast chicken carcass, I do the same as you. The, mm -hmm. the pan juices I make into gravy, but I always make heaps of gravy. I always – when I roast a chicken I, or any roast, I always put at least an inch of liquid of water in the bottom mm -hmm. and cover it with foil so it doesn't all dry out or a lid if you've got a roaster. And then I just make sure that at the end I, I make the gravy out of that with gelatine and, um, you know, whatever. I, I generally just use the pan juices and a bit of roasted garlic and stuff. Mm -hmm. And... Um, we never use all the garlic, in, oh, sorry, all the gravy in a meal and the rest of it goes into the stock or the broth. Oh, I see. But I, I do see. find like at Christmas time when we had the roast turkey and the roast duck, um, the carcasses made the best broth. So it is really they lovely They do, don't broth. they? Yeah, it is And it makes a broth. difference. Like yeah. it's, you don't get a turkey every every other week mm. during the year and then to have that beautiful broth or that beautiful duck broth or beautiful. whatever. <gasps> and if it's amazing. If you've never had turkey gumbo you need to make that have you ever had turkey okay. gumbo no but i'm writing it down i hope it's in your cookbook it's not and i need to make a recipe for it but when no, I, you just need to make another whole cookbook yeah <laughs> when i was growing chop, up chop. come and, on joe <laughs> when i was growing up and also when i was first married that was one of our favorite recipes like we used to call it turkey yumbo <laughs> so you after you've especially after you've done your christmas dinner it's great because you've got the leftover stock you can make the leftover turkey broth but even if you don't you can just cook up it you know you can buy the turkey hindquarters or whatever they mm -hmm. are hindquarters mm -hmm. that's not the right word um what do you call a it? decent size bit of bird yeah yeah the thighs <laughs> duh and um you can make it from that but it's it's basically a soup made on turkey broth with the bits of turkey and it's got okra in it do you have you had okra i have yeah i'm, I'm not a fan oh, i'm i was really i'm I, hang on you don't like the i'm goo. really struggling well if I put it in something, then it's just all snotty, and you know, like I'm only it's just nice developing. In, it's yeah. nice in gumbo. I don't know. It's it's because it's got, you know, all the other things in it. I think maybe you don't I'm not cooking this. it long enough. But then I chopped oh, it up and if... I put it in a salad, and it's like it takes. It's kind of like a cucumber texture until you chew like three or four times, and then it's kind of like. No, nah, I've never yeah. had it raw. No. Oh well, maybe that's what I'm doing wrong. I just pick things out of the supermarket and go. Oh, I haven't seen that before. That must oh. go in a salad. No, we had it all the time growing up because it's very, um, like, you know, Southern American. Well, it's in season at the moment too. So well, like, it's, if you it's make, been turning up the markets all the time. When we were kids, Mum always sliced it up into, you know, pieces like a carrot. You know, slice it all up and then um, dip them in egg and then in breadcrumbs. I guess it was, and then fry them. So they're crunchy and they're absolutely delicious like that. And we, the other day, mum was making a heap of okra and we were over there. So she did it in almond meal and it was beautiful. Oh, you can do that? Yeah, coconut oil. We, I think we fried it in coconut oil. It could have been something else, but uh, macadamia oil would be probably better. Um, and wow. yeah, with the almond meal, it was so good. And I think she's done it with coconut flour as well. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, that's mm. not broth, so no, it's <laughs> sorry not. about that. It's not. But <laughs> it's still whilst, whilst we whilst we've diverted onto other things other than broth, let's just say that if if you've got family transitioning, there are lots of different things. Sometimes it's really hard for someone to, um, you know, they're not used to broth, they're not used to the smell of it cooking there, mm. and they they just get really um, uptight about actually consuming it or having it or or any of those things. So. You know, you could start with, say, jubes. You could start with plain gelatin. If you're a vegan or a vegetarian, you could use agar-agar. And, Joe, you were telling me that they, um, you can make a stock out of kombu and sea vegetables and mushrooms yeah. as well. So there's not, mm -hmm. it's not just the meat stuff. It's, there are other different types. And just the other day I read that someone else was making a, stock, a, um, a bone broth and they were using eggshells to so break down. So, you know, like it's, it's whatever you want it to be. I so suppose. What, what did they put in their eggshells with the vegetables? Eggshells and vegetables and apple cider vinegar. Hmm. And that's and a little bit calcium. of salt. Yeah, the calcium. I'm, yeah. I'm, so if you don't want the bones. And have you ever made fish broth? Do you make that stuff? I have. Um, my neighbours don't like me when I do that though. Oh. You know, like our houses are wall to wall yeah. down here it's in Sydney. Smelly. So Yeah, it is. It's a bit pungent. Um, yeah. And, of course, I'm doing it overnight in the slow cooker. So 
Poor old Richard night. next door. Next, you know, I take the lid off in the morning and, and it's, yeah, it's a bit overpowering when he's yeah. having his wheat bix Yeah. I'm sure. <laughs> I have done it. Um, so if you're wondering how to make a fish broth, you can use, like if you go and get a whole fish or if mm-hmm. you buy, if you can ask um, at your seafood place for a fish head, yeah, big one. Mm-hmm. Um, I've done that before and just cooked that up with with your, with your stock veggies as usual, a bit mm-hmm. of apple cider vinegar and um, you can use it in things like um, I've got a recipe in my cookbook for an Asian fish stew. Mm-hmm. It's got the cauliflower rice in it. That one works well with the fish broth instead of anything that's um, seafood, any seafood dish that you would usually use water in, just swap it for the fish broth basically. So you wow. can do any broth really, prawns, you could do like add all different so if you've if you've got a heap of prawns you just use the heads and the tails to make a broth mm-hmm. and then strain it off um chuck in what? some your your kids don't eat the heads and the tails no they don't <laughs> i gave gabriel a prawn at a restaurant and i turned around and he asked me for more eyes ew i know <laughs> i know and, and oh, that's disgusting he was and it was yeah it was just and that was all the only thing he was eating off the prawns was the eyes oh that's hilarious he wouldn't touch the rest of it well, when like, i when i made mm. fish broth cassia had to eat the eyes she thought that was they were awesome so they've got little <laughs> hard bits in the middle like marbles do they? They do. Well, I'll have to give that a go next time. Maybe he was on to something. Maybe, Maybe I just need to. Mm. Probably missing out. I know. I could be. We could We could have a whole new market there. We could, oh, yeah. you know, like you can buy caviar in a jar, you know, that's fish right. eggs. We could buy, you know, like fish a whole. Eyes. Fish eyes. and a whole heap of prawns eyes in a jar. <laughs> oh, gross. Prawns <laughs> eyes are disgusting. <laughs> oh, I'm thinking up label designs as we speak. Well, people eat crickets. Why not? <laughs> well, I, I ate crickets at cave camp. They had crickets. <laughs> They were beautiful. They weren't too spiky. They were a little spiky. I had to chew properly. Yeah. Um, but they were roasted in garlic. There you go. They were really crunchy and really delightful. I was quite surprised. <laughs> I could go to the movies with a packet of crickets and be oh, quite now, happy instead that, of popcorn. That would be funny. The person sitting next to you would be going, what in the world? Yeah, because you imagine, like, instead of having that great big Coke, you had your little bone broth in your cup and your little packet of crickets. You'd be set. <laughs> I dare you. <laughs> Okay, okay. Well, next time I take the kids to the movie, that's I'll send you pictures. I will awesome. post pictures. I want to see that. I'm going to put it Bag all over Facebook. Bag of crickets Facebook. and bone broth, and this is what we're going. Yeah. It's going on Facebook. Oh, <laughs> dear, oh, dear. Um, when, we, when we talk about um, bone broth, though, we, you know, like we kind of already mentioned how important it is to make sure you get the, the bony jointed parts. Yes. And the reason for that is because that they're the parts, that's the thing that's going to make you – your um, bone broth it's going to make it set in the fridge and not mm. that you need it to be steady but that's where all the goodness is yeah. and that's 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 what the aim is mm-hmm. and maybe that's why the stocks are a little bit different you know like a stock and a consomme and and whatever maybe that they always stay in a liquid or I don't know if it's made with meat um, if it's made with it's meat it's going to be liquid obviously unless you've got mm. you know bones in there as well yeah, but when I do like the whole chicken, it turns out jellyish. Yeah, because it's got the bones and everything in there. Do you know what else? Mm-hmm. Okay, so gelatin and collagen, and a beauty regime. Yes. Yes, you know, like you have these high end. I walk past a skin clinic, and they've got your Botox, and they've got your collagen injections, and all that other stuff. And I just look at it and think, man, I'd prefer to eat my Bone collagen. Broth. Yeah. Yeah, than get a needle in my face. Oh, me too. You know, like, and it's only like was well, a couple of dollars to make bone broth, isn't it? Yeah. Versus, I don't know what you would pay for those sorts of injections. And who but knows what else is in the injections? Well, you don't. Well, you just don't know. And I mean, that's one of the the benefit is that with the gelatin and the collagen, the, the skin starts to break down and lose its elasticity. But if you've got a constant supply of gelatin type things, and I'm sure you can get it from. I haven't looked into the actual ratios of how much you can get out of other vegetables and those sorts of things. But if you've got that going in. I reckon that it would be anti-aging thing. I'm going to put it under the, the heading yeah. of superfoods or miracle foods. Oh, definitely. I did see a thing on Facebook. I'm sure it was Alex Stewart had a while back. Um, the difference with her face from you know a few years ago with her skin mm. before she started eating higher fat and the broths and everything. And then the, okay. the so change her skin, now. her skin texture is she's got um, more it's smoother um, and plumper skin, so you don't have the little lines as much. And I really think that that's um, true because, like, my skin has improved so much, 
And mm-hmm. I, I think it's partly taking out the things that were irritating me, so their dairy and all that, and starting to heal the gut. But a big part of that's got to be the the broths and the gelatine and everything in that. Mm. And it's got to be said that we, you know, like when we're talking about chickens and and birds and and veggies and all that, it has to be uh, low chemical, mm. pasture raised and finished. Yeah, um, it's just it's really important that if you're making those foods to nourish the gut lining and you know to put in your body and and you want those health giving properties then you don't want to be putting in all the pesticides at the same time because you're going to all that hard work to produce well actually bone broth isn't even hard work you just throw it in the pot and cover it with water and it's like even mark does bone broth yeah it's it's easy yeah it's easy so but but if you're going to the trouble of sourcing and yeah yeah, then then you may as well do it properly and you yeah otherwise you're not going to benefit from everything it's going to be um you know a bit from here is a bit from there yeah sort of thing and for those of you who are worrying and thinking i can't afford to buy an organic chicken um you can well i find with a chicken i can get three or four meals out of one chicken if you are really clever with it and i can give you some ideas for that but also at least get the free range um you know grass the the ones that get actually feed on grass or even see if you can look around and find someone locally that's friend or something that has chooks and you know a chook share real ones you know like instead of a cow share you can have a chook share we used to we used to raise and kill our own but we just don't have room now um but it's just something that as much as possible get the best options you can and if you can't afford the the um organic chickens at least with the bones you can get good quality um, grass-fed beef really really cheaply because you just buy, you know if you're buying the meaty bones and the and the marrow bones and that that's cheap as I remember Fuad laughing at me Fuad mm-hmm. is our our favorite chef who introduced <laughs> us um he used to have a restaurant called chickpea and now he's off having other amazing adventures um which I need to discuss with him because I'm out of the loop and I haven't heard from him for actually, ages that's really disappointing actually, now I'm getting was... cranky oh what? Don't be cranky. I was thinking we he said he'll do a podcast with us and I think we need to get him on here before his next restaurant opens because that would be good for him as well. Yeah, and he can actually tell us about all these posh things and the difference between he what we're talking his, about. And he can tell us his gut healing story as well. Oh, uh, yes. That would I forgot good. where I was going now. Um, were you talking about butterflies? <laughs> <laughs> no, it was a helicopter. <laughs> <laughs> okay, oh, private joke. No, um, no. You were I, talking I, I about broth. Talking about, I was just talking about broth, and now I don't know where I was. And then I was Sorry. talking about Fuad, and I got distracted. And you know what? He's going to hear this episode, and he's going to be peeing his pants that I've done it again. <laughs> he will. Oh, <laughs> why did you pick me? Out of all the people in the world, you picked me. Shall we pause this and go back and see what you said? <laughs> No, okay. because we might not know how to unpause it and then we won't get started again and someone will distract us even more. Okay, it's sorry. Just, it's all going downhill. We apologise for being so ditzy today. We have no excuses. Okay. No, we don't. <laughs> what? Other than being us. That's right. Mm. So how about, oh, we were talking about chicken and we did, oh, I wanted to mention too. Oh, I remember what it oh, was. Okay, oh, go, oh, go, oh, quickly oh, before you forget. Oh, okay. Do you remember I was telling Fouad about that I went and got, you know, these bones and he said to me, how much did you pay for bones? Oh, yes. And I told him that I paid $5 for a bag of bones and he laughed, like seriously, he belly laughed, like Santa belly laughed at the (laughs) fact I actually even paid for bones. Oh. And I thought I was getting a really good deal at $5. Yeah. So going back to the whole expense and, and how cheap it actually is and especially if you're doing a perpetual broth and then you're... You know, using the bones and then I've, like you do, when you go to cook your um, little lamb chops, you actually cook them in the broth and then that yeah. adds to the flavour. You can stretch those bones out uh, over, what, three days, Joe? Yeah, easy. Easy done. Easy done. So when you think, okay, so I'm spending $5 a bag, but it's actually getting carried over a three-day expense. Yeah. It's not so bad when you look at it like that. That's right. Um, I think... We mentioned about with the chicken. Oh, do you want me to just quickly mention some ideas for stretching the chicken? Because I did mention that. Now yes. people will probably ask. Yes, um, so you do what that. I'll, what I'll often do is take, so you've got your organic chicken and it's thawed out this time. <laughs> Cut off the chicken breasts and put them aside. Leave the skin with the chicken. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you can, cut off the thighs and the, all the meaty bits as well. That's two meals right there. 
then put the carcass into the stock, like break it apart, put it into your stock pot or your slow cooker, all your veggies, your water, your vinegar. Cook that down until the meat's all falling off the bones and then I would go ahead and strain it out and get the meat out of there and then put the bones back in and keep it cooking. Uh, that's optional. You can just, sometimes what I'll do is make a soup out of it. So I'll, I'll cook it, get the bones off, uh, sorry, the meat off the bones, put the meat back into the broth and make a soup. Other times I'll use the meat for another, like you might use them in wraps. So I make little omelettes and put the poached chicken in the omelettes with um, carrot sticks that are poached in broth, avocado, maybe some bean sprouts or some, you know, whatever you want in your, in your little omelette wraps and wrap it up. So it's just two eggs per omelette and you just make it in a, you know, small pan and make wraps. So that's sort of one meal there. Then you've got the soup that's made from the broth and you've got that raw chicken. So I'll use sometimes two or 300 grams of chicken for a whole dish. Mm -hmm. So I'll just chop it up and um, make like a fried rice. You can use cauliflower to make a cauliflower rice or a nasi goreng or make Singapore noodles with kelp noodles. Um, those sort of dishes have heaps of vegetables in them and they have also the cauliflower or the rice or the pasta or the, you know, the noodles so that it really stretches it. And you still get plenty of flavor because you've got garlic and chili and um, tamari or coconut aminos and all those kinds of things in the in the sauce so the chicken sort of adds to it but it's not the main part of the dish so that way I find I save heaps of money um, another thing that you can do there's a recipe on my website for fajita chicken pizza actually it's on my in my book as well and so you cook the chicken in fajita sauce kind of um, spices and things and um, then it goes on top of salad on top of a pizza base um, uh -huh. And so that you don't need much meat for that kind of thing because you've got all the other ingredients. Mm. Um, and that one, because it's spicy, you don't need a lot of meat as well. So, no. so I really stretch out my meat. And I know people think that because I'm doing gaps, which is similar to paleo style eating, they yes. sort of get this idea that it's meat, 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 meat. And yes. yes, I might have a bit of meat at every meal, but it might be 200 grams for six people or 300 grams. So Yeah, and I'm so glad you said that. Heaps of vegetables and, you know, the other things that you use with your meal. So avocado and sauerkraut and all this that really bulk out your meal. And your oils. And the oils, drizzling mm. olive oil over and stuff like that. Yeah. So like today we used, we did use 500 grams of mince at lunchtime today, but there's heaps of leftovers and it, there's like, it was mixed with a heap of veggies and then we had it with sauerkraut and avocado with olive oil drizzled over the top and spices and everything. So everyone had plenty. My son had seconds, he's 15, <laughs> and there's still leftovers. And he's tall. And he's very tall. <laughs> so it really is about, um, you know, you can save money eating this way. And if you're using the, the, the off cuts and the bits that people generally don't bother with, you know, they want the fillet steak and they want the you know, whatever, they don't want the meat bones and the no, narrow bones. No, they don't want the expensive parts. So uh, the, yeah. the cheap bits. So that, that, you know, you can make beautiful meals out of that. It's just mm. you've got to slow cook. I do a um, mushroom soup for Mark. Mm. Over the winter months he he wants a little bit of extra something yep. in his lunchbox. So um, in the Thermomix, after I've made all my uh, my bone broth, so mm -hmm. specifically I use my beef bones for that, yeah. and then I'm just putting in, say, like a cup of bone broth into my Thermomix with, a, you know, like a cup of mushrooms. Yeah. And that goes in there with some allspice, and I just blend it all up yeah. and then throw it into his thermos. So it, it's a bit different. It's not like he's having just straight bone broth every day. Now he's got – and just a little bit of coconut cream. Like it's not flash. That sounds yum. But, well, he's happy with it. Yeah. Um, but, you know, like it's just something else and it depends on the flavours that you put with it and it, it changes. It's it's whatever you're cooking and if you've got perpetual broth or you've got, you know, the slow cooker going and you're going to throw those lamb chops in there or you're going to throw whatever it is that you're going to braise in there in those early days of a GATS diet, it all adds to the flavour of it that. It really does. It, it just makes all the difference. So it's not boring. It's not like you're having the same thing every day. And as we touched on before, you're using that broth to start all your meals yeah. as well. So you're braising. I mean, Joe, you make braised carrots. Mm. I use it for the start of my stir fries. Yep. Um, you know, all of that goes into 
what we're doing. So it's not really that one cup that we talked about earlier. It's not such a big deal when it's mm. in everything else that you're consuming as well. Yeah. So we cook our, uh, most of the time our meat and veggies are cooked in broth. Mm. And you'd be amazed at the flavour difference. It's so good. The kids just love it. You don't really have to season anything on top no, of that either. It's beautiful. And you and take something boring and something cheap like carrots and throw them in there and all of a sudden they're, you know, quite a delightful sort of snack. Yeah. Well, my, my kids like carrots. Yeah, but, mine do too. You know, some people, they might, they like theirs, theirs cooked. Yeah. Um, should we try and answer a few of these questions? All right. Okay, let's go. Um, one thing I get a lot is my broth smells bad. My husband doesn't want me to cook it. He can't okay. stand the smell. All right. It could be that the blood on the outside of the bones is old. Mm. I have found that when my butcher comes in, sometimes if it's been, um, you know, no sitting or it's, you know, been in the in the box with all the bits that he cuts up, sometimes there's a bit of that extra blood on there. And if she doesn't want the smell, sometimes that's a bit stale. You can always rinse them off mm -hmm. and get rid of that before you start. It depends on how fresh the bones are, I think. And it also well. helps if you roast the meat bones. Mm. I never have time for that though. No, I don't often. But if you're worried about the taste and the smell, you can do that. It's only half an hour. Like I've even chopped no. them in raw. I mean, sorry, yeah. frozen. <laughs> Not frozen. Raw. You um, and your frozen cooking. I know. I do it all the time. Yes. Um, so mm -hmm. just like on a tray in the oven, half an hour, and then add it to the pot with the marrow bones because you don't need to roast the marrow bones mm. so much. It's just the meaty ones. It's just the meaty ones. If you want um, to. But adding more celery as well yeah. and more of those greens. And and just making sure. See, usually the people Usual that I talk to. You know, the, the, oh, yeah. the, the, you know with the, the, the tree still stuck on it, the end that no okay. one wants to really eat. Use the lettuce head, save them and use them. It's funny, a lot of times the people that say to me that their broth stinks or it's really, really bland or yuck, um, I say to them, so what did you put in it? Oh, just bones and water and, and um, apple cider vinegar. I'm like, um, well, no wonder it tastes awful. <laughs> well, by the time you get your onion in there and, hey, look, bay leaves. I put oh, bay leaves yeah. in mine and bay a bit leaves. of oregano and then you've got your, um, what, what's those things? Carrots. Carrots <laughs> yeah, and your celery and those all those bits and pieces. Leaf. And the cabbage. I use the leftover oh, cabbage. We've okay. always got shaved cabbage in the fridge as a salad sort of thing. But, you know, you peel off the outer leaves and I've always got those ready to go in there as well. So if they're finding that the smell is too pungent or it's too strong or it's, you know, any of those other things, it comes back to what else you add in it. Yeah. Um, it just, it changes vastly. And you can get, and then it will just smell like stew. It will smell really good. Yeah. And, and you won't wake up with a horrible smell. You'll wake up going, I'm starving. Well, and just start with chicken broth. Yeah. You chicken, know, like develop the palate. Chicken is very mild, and, yeah. Well, it is. Develop the palate and get people used to that. And this is the smell that's going to be in our house. And and yeah. you have to be, well, you know, have to create an education around all of that. Jumping into it is, is often because it's so different to what we grew up with. Mm. You, know, m you know, not you growing up with mm. it. You had it. But for me, it was an entirely new skill and new experience for me yeah mm. some people also find that um they can't get it to gel and so they they're not sure what to do about that but basically that's just the cartilage you just it's just to, the amount of cartilage but it yeah. doesn't matter if if in that batch it doesn't gel it could be the amount of water mm. if they've not cooked it down long enough or they've put in way too much water to begin with but it's still good yeah still use it still use it but um yeah just make sure especially with chicken you can add the like the wings and the wing tips um yeah. skin leave all the skin in there um with bean with sorry bean bone broth with the beef bone broth you need to make sure you've got the cartilage bones the knuckles yes um another one that i've been asked is once the goodness has been cooked out of all the bones and veggies, what do you do with them? So it does feel wasteful sometimes to be chucking out the veggies from broth, but just remember they've probably been simmering for two or three days, at least in my case. There's okay. not actually anything much left in the actual vegetables. It's in the broth. Okay. I sometimes, because I, I feel that way as well, if I've got leftover veggies and the, all the bits, the old bits from the week mm -hmm. before that I would just throw out, I don't feel so bad because, you know, the celery is wilted and the cabbage is a bit mouldy and, and all those other things. I don't feel so bad about that. But if I've got really fresh, good veggies and I've just got to make a, you know, a bone broth, um, I will then 
ask for the bones with a bit of extra meat on it. Mm-hmm. And then I will just take the bones out and then the um, I will cook it down as much as I can, add some more pumpkin and make it into more of a stew based yeah. thing so it will be thicker. So then you're using those vegetables. Yeah. So if it's if it's really good quality veggies and, you know, you've paid that extra for them or whatever and you're concerned, you can always just, you know, use the, the media things or put your bones in and then throw, you know, like a couple of little um, – steaks in there as well all diced mm. up and turn it into more of a stew, stew based thing so i mean yeah. yes you're adding more expense to it but you're also creating another whole meal yeah out of it if that's you know like and something else you might want to consider basis mm. yeah yeah so, someone did tell me the other day that um i can't remember who said it that they were told not that not to feed the vegetables left over from making a broth to your dog because it actually has no nutrition left in those vegetables Okay. So I don't know. Um, I, used I just to... like them. I like the idea of having them though because they yeah. still have cellulose in them. So That's you're still going to have the plant fiber and that is um, such a, well, it's a bulking matter. It's you know, going to help you go to the toilet. Yeah. Um, you know, like then you've got that whole idea of prebiotic, I think mm-hmm. they are. So feeding that, that bacteria through the entire di- digestive system, some bacteria is like, um, you know, that sort of roughage and they thrive on that sort of roughage. And if you're having a like a... A refined sugar white bread diet they don't get that roughage so incorporating that back into your diet is is a big deal as well so I still eat them yeah and also um, with dogs I just want to mention this when I first started making broths all the time again um, I was starting to give the scraps left over to the dog and I was told that actually onions can be fatal for dogs and that yep. someone was saying that they knew of a dog of themselves who had died from having onions. And I felt really dreadful. So I don't do that anymore because I always have onions in my broth. So that's just a little bit of warning if you have a dog. <laughs> mm. I had no idea that, yeah, that they could be. Yeah, well, I didn't know dogs. that that was a real thing. So I, do, I thought it was a myth. But I'm glad you said that. Yeah, well, apparently. I'm sure, I'm sure Gracie will thank you. <laughs> I'm not sure who Gracie is. <laughs> The dog, my dog. You'll meet her when you oh, come to stay. I my furry baby. Oh, okay. I haven't even seen a photo of your baby. No. Okay. Um, another thing was, now, Leah, what's your opinion on pressure cookers for broths? Okay. I have only ever used a pressure cooker when I'm harvesting honey from a beehive. I've never used it for anything else, so I can't comment. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think Natasha Campbell McBride, the gaps lady, um, yeah. doesn't recommend pressure cookers for broths. Yeah. Um, all I know is that some people say that it forces the vitamins and minerals. It, because it forces the liquids through the food to make it cook quicker, it's also forcing out the vitamins and minerals and it uses well, too many of them. But I don't know if that's that, true but, or not. Well, that would kind of make sense because when you think of essential oils, mm-hmm. that's they use a certain level of um, heat and steam to get the oils out of Mm-hmm. you know that the plant matter and if it's too high or it's too hard you don't get the full beneficial it's not as potent it's not as strong it doesn't smell as good yeah. um, it's not as concentrated so maybe there's something in that yeah I don't know I don't I, know. I just know that I've always only ever used um, slow cookers or stove tops so yeah sorry I really can't help you there but Yes, I've had that question a few times so if anyone mm. has some information on that and I haven't seen slow cooker for such a long time and the ones that well the one we have i would never cook anything in it because it's aluminium you mean the um pressure cooker the pressure cooker yeah they have brand new types that are all fancy that aren't aluminium but oh, yeah okay. I, when we were growing up my mum used the old aluminium one because she used it for cooking beans yes yeah but not for stock not for stock no hmm. um then we've also got the okay so a lot of people have probably heard of Broth of Life. Do you want to explain yes. about that, Leah? Broth of Life is now based in Sydney. Okay. And oh, there's two. Yes, it is. North Sydney. Oh, I can hear Peppy the yeah, dog. There's Peppy. <laughs> Someone's at the door. Yeah. Um, so Broth of Life is now based in Sydney and Ada and Alison run that business and they make the broth. I think they're over at DY somewhere. So they are buying in um, grass-fed um, grass finished beef bones and their vegetables and they're making these huge amounts of broth and then they're doing this amazing dehydrator thing um, and they're you know turning into like a sprinkly powder so it's almost like a seasoning yeah. so if people are traveling then they can get 
um, they don't have to take their bone broth in a liquid form. They can take it into like a, an instant bone broth mixture and just add water. Or Mark's actually got a little emergency jar of it at work. Mm. So if he's having a day and he feels really low or he starts to feel a little bit under the weather, then he's got it on his desk. Um, but it's just like, it's almost like a bullion cube that's yes. been all crumbled up. And they also make Brello, which is like a combination, like it's like the fats that are scraped mm -hmm. off the top. And Oh, that's yummy. Oh, that's so they, they do both of those little things that, you know, so if you're not got the confidence and you want to start now or if you're traveling, um, then you've got those things. And I think actually the flavor of um, their, little, their little bone broth, their dehydrated bone broth, it's actually a lot milder as well. Mm -hmm. And when I, I've got some in my cupboard at the moment, I sprinkle it over foods yeah. as well. So during summer, you don't want to eat bone broth all the time, but you can put it over the top of salads. You can sprinkle it oh, like, okay. a, like a herb salt or whatever, and you're still getting all those nutrients in there as, as well. And it's all, yeah. So we use it like a, a meat salt almost. Okay. I've used it, like I've had it on hand, especially when we first started GAPS and it was broth, 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 broth. And sometimes you'd run out. So I'd grab that out of the cupboard. I'd put some, just say I just get mince and make them into hamburger patties. That's all I put in, just mince. Yes. Um, put them in the bottom of a pan, cover it with water, just barely covered. And then I'd sprinkle the bone broth powder over the top. Yes. Um, start that cooking with the lid on turn them over when they were partially cooked and then add a heap of veggies, put the lid back on. And then it, it tasted like and probably hopefully had the nutrients of broth with mm. the meat and veggies. So that was like when you're super busy and you need um, a bit of a shortcut, that's a really good idea. Oh, it's a brilliant resource to have. Do you, do you know, um, I did have someone ask, could she use just that and never make her own broth and would she still get the same goodness? I just don't know because I'm not sure about the gelatin side of things. I don't know either. I don't know how much of the um, gelatin would actually still be left in it, if any at all. I, mm. I, I can check. I can ask for you. Yeah, I did um, say to her maybe you could add a bit of good quality gelatin well, as well. Well, you could use. Like we use the Greater Lakes gelatin yeah. as well. So she was concerned about that. Oh, actually, Greater Lakes make a hydroslate one as well. So you've got the one that sets and then mm -hmm. you've got the one that's just in a powder form. So the one's in a red, one's in a green. If you get the one in the green, you can actually just stir it straight into cold water you don't need to have hot water to dissolve the crystals. Oh. It's been slightly um, modified. They've taken the gelatin. Well, I think so. It's still got the collagen in it, okay. but they've taken the gelatin out of it. So you can, it's still great for joints and movement and all those other bits and pieces. Oh. So you I can still what the green one was. Yeah, so you can still stir it in and you can put it in smoothies and it's actually a high, quite a high protein content. So a lot of sports people use it um, as part of their supplement routine. Right. as well but it just dissolves straight in normal cold water or juice or whatever you're having it with so I don't see there being a problem if you used those two products together I think you'd be pretty much set if you're a busy person and you didn't want to do the slow cooker thing I think you'd be doing really well just to have those two products on hand and be using them in conjunction yeah I think you'd be doing well there was um a bit of a question about I don't know if I should bring this up or not but about um Great Lakes gelatin being yep. truly grass-fed. Grass okay. And you I saw that there's one that Kehoe's Kitchen sells that's a really good one that is definitely grass-fed. So if you were not, you know, if you wanted a different option, mm. um, let me just find what that one is. it Bio? What, I'm not sure, but it's what you have access to and what exactly. you can afford it as well. Yeah. Um, so I haven't seen the Kehoe's Kitchen one. I'll keep an eye out for it, though. I've just ordered it. So I'll have you? Know. Okay. Yeah. You let me know how that is. It's... Um, yeah, let me just. But the Greater them. Lakes version is so much better than what you get, say, at Woolworths or what you get in any of the other brands. So you can probably sit there and categorize them and sort of say, okay, yeah. well, these are great entry ones, but they're not grass fed and they're not mindful about their practices. These are slightly more mindful mm. and they're in my price range. And maybe, you know, I don't know what their price range is for Kehoe's is, but, yeah. you know, maybe they're like the um, gold standard or something yeah, for what we have access for in they're Australia. Pretty much, they're pretty much the best, this one. It's Go Bio. Go Bio. Yeah, and it's um, it's definitely organic, and it's grass fed and all that kind of thing. So yeah, okay, it we'll is, have to put, a, put, a, put that on the bottom in the links thing. Yeah, for we everyone will. that's looking for it. It is a little bit expensive, but I thought, well, I'm going to try it because I need to know all this stuff. And well, and you're travelling soon as well. Yeah, it's really so, good for me to be able to have these things on hand in a good quality. You know, something that's that I know is really good quality that I can take with me. Or leave it home because I know and on the last trip the kids, kids sort of, yeah, yeah. they ran, ran out towards the end of they their did. bone broth, didn't they? Yeah. 
Yeah. And my assistant's going to be away for a month, so she won't be here to make it. <laughs> you need to nail her feet to the floor. I know. This is not on. She cannot go to Paris. What in the world? <laughs> She's off to Paris. Oh. I know. She can come back. She can do a review on all the different types of bone broth stocks and consommes and all those posh things over there. Yes, she well, can go and do that. She's, she's supposed to be living on them herself, so we'll see how she goes. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Okay, cool. Anything um, else? Any so, other questions? Yes, there was more. Hang on, I'll just go oh, back. Oh, really? And, yeah, there was plenty. Oh, your page is busy. Okay. Um, let's see. Okay, the, some people want to know what the book is that we're talking about. So obviously that's the GAPS book, which is the Gut and Psychology Syndrome by Natasha Campbell McBride. So she explains, mm -hmm. you know, why to use broths in there. Um, another lady said that she wants to know how long broth will last in the fridge. Um, I generally make sure that the fat is still in the broth. I don't scoop it off. And, mm -hmm. you know, with beef bone broth, you'll often end up with a really heavy layer of fat, but that's okay. Just put it into your jars, put it in the fridge, and then you've got that layer of fat will help preserve it. Um, and I usually keep it in the fridge for about a week. What would you say, Leah? Yeah, I keep it in the fridge a week, but I keep it in the back of the fridge. Yes. I don't store it in the door of the fridge. No. You know, when I was breastfeeding, you know, they always said don't store it in the door of the fridge because the fridge is always open and closed and that yes. messes with the temperature. So if you want to keep it that bit longer you store it in the back and if you've got any problems with it and it's a bit over the week and you're not sure mm. then you know just keep in mind that you're going to be throwing it into a pan and it's going to go to a super high heat and as yeah. long as you bring that all the way up then you're pretty safe um but there's you know it's, it freezes really well you just yeah. you take it off take it out strain it off let it cool completely and then you can put it into one cup measures in those clip seal bags like i would not put it in clip seal bag if it was hot but you can set it off in the fridge and let it completely chill and then put in a clip seal bag or if you've got little one cup containers or, or whatever and then you just store them in the freezer and they sit nice and flat yeah so oh you could put them in the mashies container oh the little mashies yeah that's a good idea i wonder how many mils do those hold 140 oh. i already asked that so you'd have, yeah already <laughs> asked that. Mm. yeah well yeah. I, everything i do normally takes about like if for breakfast i'm using you know cupfuls yeah that's right so that's um, only little bits but that's it's, only it's little handy bits. for you know if you're if you've got a little one that needs the broths that's yeah. handy to have to take with you when you go out well that's actually a good amount for a child like yeah. if you're having if you're having a cup of day for an, an adult mm. of bone broth you know that's that's like half that's that's perfect yeah that's right mm. um now um someone else said how long does it last in the freezer mm. I don't know. I think it's only, I would generally only leave it in the freezer for a couple of months, but maybe it could probably last longer than that. It probably could, but it never does. Yeah, because we use it, it. Yeah. And, you know, mine lasts three days. So I don't have the perpetual broth thing going. I don't have the stove going all the time. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, every three days I've got the slow cooker on and I'm doing another lot. Yeah. So you really do, if you're having that cup a day and you're using it in all your cooking, then you're going to turn it up. You know, that turnover is going to be quite um, quick. Yes. Mm. All right. I'll just see if I have any more questions here. I think I, I, think I do. Um, let's see. Oh, it's mostly stuff that we've answered, I think. Okay. But if anyone thinks of anything else that they want to know, um, just leave a message on our Facebook page and we'll try and answer that as well. Yeah, and um, we apologise if we missed you. Yeah. But definitely, if you haven't tried making broth before, start with the chicken because it's very mild mm -hmm. um, and it's very simple to do. You can either do the carcass version or the whole chicken version and use the cooked meat later and... Um, if you look on the, um, on our websites, we've both, I think you said you've got stuff about broth on your website. Yeah. Yeah. And I do too. And I've mm -hmm. got some ideas of how I've I got use one of my, it. I've got one of my daggy videos. <laughs> Very good. And I've got ideas on there, how to use it on my, on my site. So we'll give you the links for those. Mm -hmm. Um, and oh, with the fat too, I should mention that. When you do have that layer of fat on top of your broth, you can either just mix it in when you cook with it and let it melt in and just add it to your food. That's fine. Or you use you, it straight or use off. It. I put it in the pan and use it for my scrambled eggs in the morning. Yeah, perfect. So that's tallow mm. if, it, if it's beef or lamb. Yeah. Um, some people, if you are still eating potatoes or sweet potatoes, um, it makes beautiful um, fat for frying your potatoes in. 
or cooking mushrooms in. Or cooking pumpkin in. Oh, yeah, pumpkin Yum. chips. Oh, that's so good. Yes. Mm. But So all those things, use it for cooking. Don't waste it. Don't chuck it out. You can use it, definitely. Absolutely. If you're really talented, you can turn it into soap. I haven't worked out how to do that oh, yet. Oh, I've but... done that. Oh. Yeah, I used to make soap. It's just oh. another one of those things on my list nowadays. <laughs> Yeah, I don't get it done. I just buy one, it. One of those obscure hobbies. You're like me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I I boiled up all my tallow and made soap. So I wow. make my own, I make my own tallow too. I should just quickly mention this. When I buy uh, my beef, I get a whole side of beef um, from a friend, and it's all organic, grass fed, local down the street. And um, I ask for the bones and the fat as well. And so the fat, I just put um, chop it up roughly, put it into a big roaster in the oven low heat so about 150 and every now and then I open up the oven tip off the melted fat into dishes or jars or whatever to cool and put the roaster back in the oven and just keep doing that until you've gotten down to the little scruffy little scraps mm. and um, that's how you make tallow. Easy. I put mine all in the slow cooker so yeah, I dice all those bits into a good little bits too, yeah. and it only takes a few hours Yeah, and then I just strain off the whole and then you've got all those crunchy crunchy bits in the bottom. Yes. That's mm. good. I like the crunchy, crunchy bits. Yeah, me too. Especially mm. if you make um, your chicken fat. And you, I think we talked about this once Yeah, before, the chicken the skin chippies. Oh, oh, so good. Yeah. Get all your chicken skin and, and render that down in a frying pan on the stove really slowly and you've got the beautiful chicken fat and then you eat the skin like it goes crunchy like pork. Um, yeah, pork, pork rinds almost, but yeah. chicken-flavoured pork rinds. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, better than chips. Much better. Mm -hmm. anyway i think we've mostly covered it so um anything else you have just just check our blogs um to see if we've answered anything else on our blog posts about broth um but otherwise feel free to message us or ask us on facebook that'll be fine that'd be lovely yeah all right well thank you everybody for listening in to our craziness <laughs> got a bit crazy today oh did Wait, we when does it doesn't oh, oh we've gotten true. something now i was just thinking the broth video that we did um that's on YouTube. So if you go onto my YouTube channel, you can find that. And I think it's just You under... have a YouTube channel? Yeah, but I don't get stuff on there very much. But anyway, I think it's under Joe Witten. Oh, I'm pretty sure okay. it is. We'll look up Quirky Cooking and look up Joe Witten and you'll find it on one or the other. <laughs> right. Well, is that, is that the Isaac one, the one that Isaac filmed? Yes. Okay, because I think we're, like I went and cut and paste a link from that that you had on your page yes. and I just put it on my Facebook page. Okay. But we'll just put that at the end of our notes. Yeah. Won't we? Yep. So that's easy. So there is a few things on my YouTube channel, but I just don't get there very often because it's one of those things where, like you said, you've actually got to go comb your hair, put your makeup on and look decent. Makeup? <laughs> What's this makeup business? <laughs> uh, yeah, that's what my daughter says. Mum, you yeah. don't need that. Oh, it, I just find the amount of times I wear it, it's, <laughs> I go to the drawer and I'm like, oh, look at that, it's all gone off or it's all gone cakey or I haven't got any, oh, well, and off I go out the door with a bit of Burt's Bees or a bit of whatever it is, <laughs> whatever I've made. Oh, that's good. <laughs> you go to the fridge and get a bit of tallow and rub that on and you're ready to go. Put some coconut oil on your lips. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> oh, thank you, Leah. You're good fun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm a dag. I can't help it. That's good. Everyone, thank you so much for listening and we hope that you enjoyed it and had a laugh and learnt something and we hope you're finding it helpful. And please listen in um, every week on Fridays. We release each podcast and you can find us on The Wellness Couch. You can also find us on iTunes, A Quirky Journey, and you can post your question and comments on our Facebook pages or on the website, thewellnesscouch.com backslash A Quirky Journey. Um, I think that's about it. That's it. Thank you so much. Ah, uh, thanks for hanging. And have a great weekend. Okay, bye. Bye. This has been a production of thewellnesscouch.com. Check us out on Facebook and join in the conversation on facebook.com forward slash thewellnesscouch. Subscribe to each show on iTunes and check us out on Twitter. The Wellness Couch, streaming wellness into your lives. Whilst the Wellness Couch presenter endeavor to provide accurate and helpful information to their listeners, these podcasts cannot take into account individual circumstances and are not intended to be a substitute for health and medical advice from a qualified health professional. You should always seek the advice of a qualified health professional before acting on any of the information provided by any of the Wellness Couch podcasts.